Earlier today, reporter Mark Weiss spoke with Dr. Emmanuel Navon from Tel Aviv University and the Herzliya Interdisciplinary Center and asked him if Catalonia is heading for independence. Well, if they do that, uh, the prime minister will uh, use the article of the constitution that enables the uh, central government in Madrid to cancel all the uh, power, the autonomous power of the uh, region of Catalonia. Um, so he can do that legally, because not only because the constitution says so, but also because there was recently a uh, decision from the uh, Supreme Court in Spain uh, stating that the uh, referendum that was held a couple of weeks ago is illegal. So the uh, the government in Madrid has the legal tools uh, to uh, prevent the uh, independence of uh, Catalonia. But then, of course, the question is, how will the uh, international community react? So what is likely to happen then is that the European Union and most European governments will not recognize uh, Catalonia because most European countries also have uh, kind of rebellious regions, and they do not want this to happen in their own country. Uh, on the other hand, Russia, which is a uh, major troublemaker in, in Europe, can always try uh, to uh, spread division uh, within the European Union and always encourages uh, secessionist forces might actually recognize the independence of, uh, of Catalonia. Is compromise still possible at this juncture? For instance, if the Spanish government offered more cash and increased autonomous powers to the Catalonians, do you think this would be enough to reach some kind of compromise? So, yes, uh, ideally, this is what should be uh, happening. I mean, one of the main reasons why Catalonia uh, wants to declare independence independence in the first place uh, is because it claims that, A, it doesn't get enough uh, for the money that it uh, invests um, for its taxes. The taxes paid by the Catalonia region, they claim that the uh, central government in Madrid keeps most of this money and does not reinvest it in infrastructures in Catalonia. That's A. And B, with regard to the powers that the region would like to have, they would like to have more powers, something similar to a federal system uh, like in Germany, for example. So I think that if Spain wants to prevent the clash and the breakup of, uh, of Catalonia, what it should do is really negotiate a better deal uh, in, term of, in terms of taxes with Catalonia, but also even agree to some kind of federal system where the regions uh, would have more power, uh, just like they do in, uh, in the lender in, in Germany. And that uh, should, be, should uh, be able to prevent uh, a clash and a breakup uh, uh, between Catalonia and Spain. Let's assume, uh, for argument's sake, that the two sides cannot reach agreement. Do you think there's a, a possibility of this spinning, spinning out of control, maybe turning into violent insurrection, or even something we've seen on the lines of what's happening that's been happening in the Basque region for many years? So if they don't reach a uh, compromise, it does look like the uh, Spanish government uh, is ready uh, to really use force, as they did already, by the way, uh, when there was the uh, referendum. Uh, and it doesn't look like the uh, leadership of the Catalonia region is, is ready to back down. Uh, so, yeah, theoretically, they could go uh, to a violent confrontation. Uh, and then, of course, uh, don't forget that the government of Prime Minister Rajoy, the uh, Spanish government, is a minority government. So it's not that he has a comfortable a majority in the first place, as it is politically, uh, he has a weak uh, government, a minority government. So it's not that he can actually afford uh, to really conform the uh, Catalonia uh, region. But in case of a clash between the uh, Catalonia and the uh, uh, Madrid government, uh, I, I assume that other European governments and the uh, European Union uh, would intervene to try and, and convince both sides to reach a compromise. If push comes to shove, could Catalonia survive as an independent state? You've already mentioned the significant opposition within Europe, within the EU to this. We've also heard reports over the last few days of major companies, banks and utility um, services threatening to pull out of Barcelona immediately and relocate to Madrid. Could Catalonia survive? I mean, theoretically, yes. There are much smaller countries uh, in the EU. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, Belgium and uh, Luxembourg and Denmark are also uh, small-sized uh, countries, and they're doing fine in the EU. But again, 
uh, the European Union has already uh, announced that if Catalonia secedes, it will not be uh, welcome to automatically uh, be a, a member of the European Union. They would have to apply. Uh, the European Union is basically trying to convince Catalonia not to secede. Uh, I mean, theoretically, if they would secede and join the uh, EU and apply for the uh, EU, uh, yes, they would be able to survive economically uh, because they're one of the wealthiest regions in Spain, which is one of the reasons why uh, they want to uh, secede in the first uh, uh, place. Uh, so they could make it uh, to both the uh, government in Madrid uh, and the European Union, the uh, European Commission in Brussels will uh, try very hard to make their, their life uh, difficult, including uh, on the economic level. You mentioned in passing uh, other uh, areas of Europe where similar struggles are taking place. Scotland voted only by a small margin a few years ago to remain in the UK. Belgium, of course, is totally divided on ethnic grounds. Northern Italy has seen independence movements recently. Um, can we explain this as local protest votes? Are we talking about deeper historical trends here? So I, I see two reasons for that. First of all, uh, I think that the uh, the phenomenon of globalization and also of mass migration has re actually uh, uh, awakened feelings of uh, national identity and nationalism uh, in, in Europe. That's uh, one reason. Another reason is that uh, the European Union, uh, and that's a, a paradox of the European Union, which uh, uh, a lot of people thought was going to put an end to national borders and national identity. As a matter of fact, precisely because the European Union uh, offers this kind of uh, safe and secure environment for small countries to face the wider world, including uh, in terms of uh, trade, uh, for example. So uh, smaller regions feel the confidence of breaking up from the other state uh, and uh, and then uh, you know reapply for the European Union. This is something that was said uh, uh, very clearly by the uh, leader of Scotland when they were trying to uh, when they were uh, promoting the yes for the uh, referendum to leave the uh, United Kingdom. What they were saying is that we have our own you know natural resources and uh, economic assets. Uh, we'll just do fine uh, as a small country within the European uh, Union. So as I said. One of the paradoxes of the EU uh, is that it actually encourages small uh, regions and nations to uh, break away and remain within the EU. And finally, if we can focus uh, again on Spain, of course the country enjoyed a bitter civil war in the 1930s, <clears throat> followed by decades of fascism under Franco. Is this the most serious constitutional crisis since Spain became a democracy? Yes, definitely. I think this is definitely uh, the worst uh, uh, political and constitutional crisis faced by uh, Spain uh, since the end of the uh, of the Franco uh, regime. And I think it will be a test also to the strength and the health of the uh, Spanish uh, uh, democracy and monarchy, by the way, because don't forget that Spain is also a monarchy and a king, uh, even though he doesn't hold, uh, of course, political powers. Uh, he is, of course, against the uh, secession of uh, Catalonia, and this uh, this crisis will be a test uh, to both uh, the monarchy and uh, the democracy, the Spanish democracy. Dr. Emmanuel Navon.